Laura and Christine. Thank you so much for coming today to share with the members the key seven expedition essentials. I'm so excited to learn these from you and so enjoy your guys' meetings. Hello. Thank you for having us, Tracy. Oh, I just love being in your presence. I swear there's something magical about key meetings and I just love seeing where we're going. So thank you for sharing this. And I feel like this is the best first video for new members to launch into the whole key experience. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about what the seven expedition essentials are and then go into each one into more detail? We start with stop and it's the most important out of all of them, which is why we start with it. Because if you stop doing whatever it is you're doing in the moment that's making your life miserable, that's making you uncomfortable, that's making you confused. If you just stop and get back to the place of who you are, you recover and you, and you feel better and you feel supported inside of yourself again, then when you return to whatever you were doing, the insight that you need is there. You know, the information is flowing again, the energy you need to be to be connected to what you're doing is flowing. But if you don't stop, then you can keep moving forward in a position of something that you don't want. Then on a quantum level, you're endorsing what you don't want. It, there's no judgment in the quantum realm. It just gives you whatever you're asking for. So that's why we consider stop to be the first key expedition essential. So what does it mean when you always say to be who you authentically are? <laughs> you know, a lot of people don't know what that means. And it's because, and I didn't either. When people told me at first, I had no clue. It took me a couple of years actually to realize me. And what you'll find is if you realize um, any level of discomfort in your life and you don't move in that discomfort, then you start naturally seeing the truth of who you are. Because when you're in your truth, everything is great. Everything flows, everything supports you. So that's one of the first ways you can tell if something is your truth or a delusion. And I don't mean like that angsty, oh, I'm gonna get this done, I'm gonna stick it to them. I don't mean that feeling, because some people think, oh yeah, I feel great when I have that. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's not the truth of who you are. That's the bravado, that's the, the forceful expression. So we're talking about, like when you're sitting and you're relaxed with somebody you care about and it just feels good. Well, you're in your truth in that moment. And a lot of people don't know who they are because we are a conglomeration of beliefs from the past that others have given to us. Just by living on earth, we don't operate in the truth of who we are because we have to, we have this sense of non-safety and survival. And we are unlimited beings that are always safe, mm -hmm. that we're always joyful. We're always in love. And the, the physical components of this world can sometimes get in that get in the way of who we think we who we think we are versus who we really are. Mm -hmm. And so the, and yeah, we have conditioning this, too. Yeah. And we have the conditioning that is really um pushes forward for us to identify ourselves and to lock ourselves into a box when we're unlimited. So do you remember when you were younger and somebody first asked you, what do you want to do when you grow up? Oh my goodness, you hadn't experienced the world. Did you have any idea? I mean, some people know, like they feel it in their heart and they've carried it all along. I have uh, one of my grandkids, oh, I'm going to be a singer. And I am I I believe it, I feel it. And I, and I think they know it. They've got that locked in and, and it just brings everything that they love about themselves to the surface. So whether whether they become a professional singer or not, they relate to this, it's part of who they are and their expression of that is the truth. Now, if I say I'm going to be a singer, but I want it because I want money. I want it because I want fame. See what I mean? Now I'm no longer in the expression of my truth because, oh, I want fame. Well, why do I need fame? You have to just start pulling apart your motivations to really recognize what is the lower basis of your truth and how, how you can become that in everything that you do. And what you'll find is a lot of times when you want something, it's because you feel the lack of it in your life. And when you're living in your truth, you want for nothing. You're happy where you are, as you are in the moment without needing change. 
Okay. So what I'm hearing you say is that when you want something and it just is because it makes you feel good and brings you joy, that's the truth of who you are. But if your motivation is something outside of yourself, like you said, the fame or the money, then that's not being in your, in your full truth. Close. Very close, <laughs> but not quite there. Okay. Well, that's why you guys, we need to do these key classes so we can learn. And then you said something else that I want to kind of develop here is I feel like a lot of people are unaware of who they really are on a physical, spiritual connection. And I've heard it said that, you know, a lot of people think we're a body with a soul. And then I have learned in the last few years of my awakening that no, we're actually a soul with a body. But then yesterday you guys said something about a spirit, soul, body. Is that like advanced or is that something you want to just touch on briefly? Currently, the way um, in the 3D aspects of ourselves and the reality, like you said, we're a body with a soul. That's a 3D connotation. That's that's how that is lived, is that way. And then as you start to elevate and your frequencies change, then you realize you're a soul within a body. And then as you elevate more, you realize that there is no body that the body is only existing because of the frequency you are. So we go from being a carbon-based physical form to putting pressure on the carbon in our form through our frequency. And that pressure changes the form on a quantum level to crystalline. So it's just like when carbon in the, in the earth turns to diamonds, our frequency of our soul in the physical form puts pressure on the carbon in the form and we get that same kind of experience of being a diamond in a human body. And then the body doesn't even matter. Because the body at that point exists within you. Within it's it's your just body. your frequency. Just you, you're, right. the com- you're the complete authority of it versus the body had an earthly, an earthly control. And it ends the earthly control and you are independent and you are one with just you. Which brings me to another point. We're talking about being the truth of who you are everybody's on a journey and has varying degrees. And sometimes you can experience more of who you are in some moments and then not in others. So it's not, you know, we hear a lot of people saying, I had a spiritual awakening and I've made it. I'm finally here. (laughs) But it's not, it doesn't really work that way. We get levels and then we get levels. And then, you know, it's this kind of journey. And another part about being the truth of who you are is to realize that when you are making your decisions and your choices from the inside out, so you have to consider your needs first and then you enter into the consideration of others. Now that is part of being the full expression of yourself because if you are making your decisions from the outside in, you're not gonna be able to see your stuff. So for instance, if you wanna go out to dinner, this was one of the ones that really woke me up. I wanted to go out to dinner with the family and this was years ago and, and I got in the car and I realized I started to feel tense and frustrated and I realized I couldn't pick a restaurant that we all wanted to go to. But the thing is, I didn't start with what I wanted. I just kept looking what everyone else in the car wanted and, and I just realized I could not make it happen. Now, when I turn around and I say what I want and then the others say what they want, and we're all just saying what we want, we can find a win because that's how life works. But if I only consider what others want, I can't find the win. If I only consider what I want, I can't find the win. And the full expression of ourselves isn't just our personal win. It's the connection and communication with everything around us. It's a win in all directions. Mm, I like that. I think it's a mom trait. You know, when you're a mom, you ask everybody, well, what do you want? What do you want? Right. (laughs) Because you want to meet their needs because you want to take care of them. So your priority is taking care of them versus knowing what you personally want. Yep. That's how it begins. I think that's part of it. We need to relearn that. And I love the stop technique as well, because I have caught myself spiraling on some angst. Like, why didn't anybody empty the dishwasher? Why did they just stick all their you know, dishes in the sink and then empty the dishwasher. And then I have to stop and regather myself and, you know, move on after I'm back into a positive state. Yes. If you want to look at that, 
as part of the stop exercise, the angst is there. And then this, the frustration with what's going on as a result of the angst. And all of it is driven by a belief that you're holding that isn't actually your truth. Right. So your outer world is reflecting your inner state, which is why you have to start from the inside. Because so think about it this way. If you go one, because it, it doesn't happen every single day. It's not like always when, when that is that you get that angsty, frust frustrated state. But if you right. haven't been meeting your own needs, then you start looking externally for your needs to be met. So then you see, oh, well, that didn't get done. So that's part of the reason that's that's so uncomfortable for you. When you're meeting your own needs, you look at it and it's like, oh, okay, I see that's just not done. So a clear way to see this is on your good day, would you still have those angsty feelings? On oh, your good day, that you're joyful and you're just like, woo, today's a great day. Oh my gosh, I look at this. My my kids left their dishes out. How amazing are they? And you get to <laughs> so happy that they're here that I get to have this experience with them. Right. You get to see what they ate. You get to, you get to relive joyful thoughts about them. Remember remembrances like say, oh, if I saw um, a half eaten hot dog going to the place. Well, on a bad day, I'll be like, who's wasting food? You know, when I'm out of my, out of sync with myself, I'm like, God, why didn't they just put it in the trash? But on a good day, I'd be like, oh, I remember when we used to make those together. Ah, oh, I wonder what, you know, and you, you can think about the joy they had choosing a hot dog because of what they grew up with. You know what I mean? It's, it's a whole different experience when you're in your truth than when you're carrying the delusion and pain and, and beliefs that don't actually align with you. And when we start looking at children as they grow when they're babies, you know, we have a lot more compassion and tolerance, but as they grow, then something in our mind thinks we need to hold them more accountable. Society, society right. said, you need to be responsible by this age. You mm -hmm. need to know how to accomplish this by this age. Just going to school fed us the belief that age equals certain levels of achievement. And it, and it actually doesn't. One person can learn to do the dishes when they're in their forties and another can learn to do it when they're five and it'll make sense to them because that's their story. That's their journey. And you alluded to that before that everybody is on their journey and you can't know the priority of their journey. So therefore, every time we try to judge somebody with where they're supposed to be, like somebody should have realized that dishwasher needed to be emptied. Well, you realized it and you can ask somebody to do it. So, so there's a different approach there versus I realized it. Why didn't anybody else do it? They all have a reason. It's, most of the time it didn't even occur to them. <laughs> so that's what the stop exercise is really good for us. It's getting us out of judgment and out of expectation because those are the two things that lead us outside of our bodies into a place where we are looking at the world and saying, why? <laughs> And once we start being in judgment and expectation, then we come to conclusions and assumptions and which, obligation, which just continually crumbles the foundation of our love and our light. And it depletes us because in order to hold that belief that isn't actually true for us, we get worn down. So that's another way you can see if you're in the full expression of yourself, your energy is abundant when you're in your truth. And when you're not, you just start to wear down fast. And this goes with relationships, with other people, with your health, with your body, with your job, with money, with everything. It, it's everything. Wow. We still have six more. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I'm going to have to listen to the replay to this every week. <laughs> okay. Thanks to you guys. What about number two? Kindness to self kindness for yourself and when you're kind to yourself and for yourself it then flows on everything so you don't have to work at being kind to others when you're kind to yourself and it's not about um pampering yourself because a lot of people have taken it in that direction you know take care of your own needs like, Make sure i'm kind to myself and we're like if you were you wouldn't have done that <laughs> <laughs> well you can see what, what she means by that is behavior speaks louder than somebody's words. And when somebody is frowning and upset at themselves, then you know if they were being kind to themselves, that's not the result you get when you're kind. 
you don't you don't feel a see and this is i do this physical movement because it makes it so easy to remember <laughs> see if you're doing that <laughs> basically stabbing yourself in the heart and i have to stick my tongue out because it just makes it more humorous for me when i do that then i recognize okay if i was being kind to myself or somebody else would be kind of themselves, it wouldn't occur to me that they're stabbing themselves, that there's some kind of pain and aches because it's always self-inflicted. See, if you're looking at somebody else and you like with the dishwasher store you, you had and you get that frustration, if you were being kind to yourself, there's no frustration. There's, you don't, and then there's no need to see them without kindness. There's no self-victimization. So the kindness to self the, the lack of kindness happens when you don't trust yourself and trust the moment that you are exactly where you need to be in this moment. It's when, again, when you start going from inner to outer and you start looking at the world and making judgments that you're not okay, that you're not safe. So when you start making assumptions and it just, it just spirals out of control. Wow, that's deep. Yes. So it looks very different than what most people think that it looks like. Again, she, you know, being kind to myself in some people's eyes may look like I'm going to get a massage today, but if I'm sitting here stressing about money and I'm getting a massage, is that really kind? Until I can release those limiting beliefs about money and give it freely and joyfully, then I, there's, there's a catch 22 there because I'm still holding myself accountable to belief systems that were never mine in the first place, but I picked them up because I was taught that if I didn't pick them up, I would be unsafe. I would not fit in. I, I Even the belief that I need to know what the world is going to look like in this next moment or tomorrow, that's a big one that I need to do this now. So my life in the future is going to be this way. How many times has that actually worked out for you though? If you look at your life now, how was it 10 years ago? How was it five years ago? Are you still repeating some of the same patterns? And if so, then you can see that there's unkindness. Kindness is the way to break that, to stop, to slow down, to get into your heart, to look in the mirror and say, I love you. I forgive you. I, you know, to yourself. I forgive myself. I love myself. Actually, whenever you, you get beyond to the upper levels, you'll realize that there was never anything to forgive in the first place. Mm -hmm. Cause that's just part of a dualistic system that has nothing to do with who we are because we are unity. We are one. And, and nobody's trying to harm us ever. That's, mm -hmm. but that's a whole, like you said, we've, we've still got five more to go. <laughs> We're not going to make it if we, if we keep going into the depths, but this is why we need, we, we encourage others to come to the key calls because we can talk through these experiences that they're having and we can help them see. When we take responsibility for the journey and the reactions of others, we are being unkind to ourselves because mm -hmm. their souls, we, we can't possibly know what their journey has been or where they're going or what lessons they're trying to learn. And for us to try to take responsibility for that is, uh, it's, unkind. it's, it's unkind mm -hmm. it's, and it's inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like honestly that each one of these, we can spend months on, you know, there's exactly. so, there's so many layers of each. Mm -hmm. So are you ready to go to number three? Yes. yes. Responsibility to be the full expression of your truth. And we've already talked a little bit about what it is to be in your truth. So this is not quite um, a hit to a, a fear when you have to be responsible for your truth. But the responsibility is the moment that you realize you're not in your truth, you need to stop and communicate that. So for instance, if I if somebody's asking me to go do something with them, and I don't want to do it, but I feel obligated because they did something else for me in the past, or I know they really need my help. And if I don't really express to them, ah, oh, no, I have no idea or inclination to want to be for any part of that. Well, you know what is not going to be a good experience for either of us on a whole. There's going to be some angst in there. There's going to be pressure. So in my responsibility to myself, I can say, I can tell them the truth. No, I don't want to do anything like that. 
But here's the, the caveat to all of that is when we prioritize what's important to us in the truth of who we are, it changes the response. So say my friend who broke her neck and I, and she needed me to come to her house and help her twice a week. Did I want to help her? Sure, I wanted to help her. Did I want to be at her house twice a week? No, I had too many things on my plate to do. But my priority is not the work that I do. See, my priority is my relationships. So that, again, puts me in balance with my truth. And I can say to her, absolutely, I'll be there. I'll be working. And I don't want you to feel bad that I'm working. And I don't want you to feel bad for asking me for anything you need while I'm there. So again, communicating my whole truth gave us an amazing experience. See, if I'd have just gone and said nothing, she would have felt my stress. But if, I, if I'm honest and I'm open and I clearly communicate me, then there's no delusion, there's no misunderstanding, and it's a very loving, kind experience. So the interesting part of this is the word is responsibility. And most people would think control you know, being responsible for others. But what we really mean by this is, again, going within, being dedicated to yourself, to the love that's within you, and to your being okay in every moment. And if you're not in okay in every moment, then you are not holding the responsibility within yourself. Because nobody freedom. else can know. Right. Nobody else can possibly even guess on a continual basis, what exactly you need. So it has to be you that communicates this. Right. And another word that I could say for responsibility would be awareness. So if you are aware of what is happening within you, of the emotions that you're having, of the thoughts you're having, what are you investing your thought in, thoughts in, what are you investing your emotions in? And do you, do you like what it's, how it's making you feel? Do you like it, the reality that it's creating for you? But the responsibility that comes on top of just your awareness is now you need to communicate it, right? So that's where the responsibility mm -hmm. belongs is now you need to communicate that to yourself and others. Mm -hmm. So yeah. like whenever we can take examples with us, I'm like, she's like, Hey, Laura, do you want to do this today? And I'm like, uh, I would really like to, but I have all this stuff to do today. So it's the same thing that she's saying. Where is, where is my responsibility to myself? Is it to the work? Is it the prioritizing of the work? Or is it the prioritizing of the relationships? And you can choose different things at different times. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be one or the other all the time. Some days we'll be talking and we let, we're enjoying our conversation. And then we're like, but I have this work that I want to get done. Mm -hmm. I have a deadline for myself and it's what I choose. It's not that it's a pressure or a stress. And, and we can, we have the right to choose in every moment what we want to do. And I used to use this one when I would have an argument <laughs> <laughs> before, before I did this, you know, when I would have an argument, I would be like, stop doing this. You're doing this to me. <laughs> but after I started stopping and being kind to myself, I, in the, in an argument, I would have the responsibility to say, I, I know you're going through trouble right now, but I refuse to participate in things that are not joyful for me anymore. So although I know you love me and you would never do anything to hurt me, I'm going to uphold that part in my life. And whenever you're ready to be calm and be loving toward yourself and toward me, we, then we can start again. You know, that's being responsible. And it's kind to yourself too. Mm -hmm. And it's stopping something that you don't want. You see how these build on each other. Yeah, and they're great. The, the being kind to yourself is knowing that the is living in the assumption and the knowing of your truth, which is everyone is made of love. So how could someone not love you? Mm. It's insisting on the truth. It's quantumly witnessing the love. But it doesn't mean you physically have to stay in the presence of energy that's like this does that make sense yeah kind of so your responsibility is to yourself to allow that to either if you stay in that energy of of someone being mad and frustrated around you knowing that you're a being made of water and that your cells vibrate very easily with other other frequencies 
you you can choose to stay and be responsible for yourself, no blaming, or you can choose to be kind, acknowledge what the situation actually is, and then leave. That's like what happened yesterday during our call. I was started the call in here and there was excess noise. And instead of even addressing the noise, I just took care of myself and I went down the hall mm-hmm. <laughs> like that. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Like that. Mm -hmm. As long as you did it joyfully and you didn't do it as they didn't leave me a choice because that would be the unkindness part. Mm -hmm. If you're like, oh, I can resolve this. I can take care of me. No problem. And everybody has what they want. See, that's a win when you, if you feel it that way, but it's just like when I was, oh, good. If you felt it that that way, then absolutely. We're saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Let's go to number four discipline this one is such a confusing one for people until they once once you get it once it clicks though it stays with you discipline to live in this moment and the next because responsibility and discipline they go hand in hand so once you choose responsibility to be the truth of yourself now you have to only do that in this moment so the truth of myself 10 years ago is not who i am today So if I'm bringing up something from the past in order to create something in this moment, such as, well, back then when this person did this to me, those were fighting words and I got to hold you accountable for that. Back then, that might've been part of my joy, but is it my joy today? Am I in this moment with you acting a certain way and me acting a certain way? Is it my joy to say them are fighting words (laughs) or is it my joy to be like, oh, wow, I see how you feel. You know, we get to choose but it has to be the choice in this moment versus the choice based on the past. That was funny. <laughs> that makes total sense. <laughs> and it's it's also the place where, you know, it, it's not just the anger or anything that comes up, but trauma. If trauma has been locked in your body and your energy and your cells, you can have the discipline to say, that's my past and I'm here now and I create who I am now. Mm-hmm. Do I want to perpetuate? See, that's why you have to look at in this moment, do I want to perpetuate what has been happening? Or do I want to choose me and my truth? And one of the ways I like to um, to have my brain understand this is if I think of this reality as an illusion, kind of like a game, how do we know that somebody didn't just drop programming in us and give us all this past stuff that really has nothing to do with us. We don't really know that that didn't actually happen. You know, the past is not real, just as the future is not real. The only moment we have is right now. Wow, Laura, that's pretty deep. But <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> well, if you think about it, and we can even expand a little bit on that, is the telepathic messages that go around that are floating in the ether we can receive a message that's not even ours. So we can pick up something, be influenced by it. When they're like, wait a second, that's not my truth. Okay, so because a lot of people that are empaths, they say, well, how do I know if it's me or someone else? This is how you know. If it doesn't align with your truth, it's not you. End of story. You're picking up on it. You resonate with it for some reason, possibly, but you don't have to live anything that doesn't align with your truth. There's nothing requiring you to do that. So you get to choose in each moment. Well, will I enjoy that? Do I want that? Is it going to give me what I want? Will I get the results of my expectation if I behave that way, act that way? Now, and when I say that, I don't mean based on society rules. I mean, based on our heart. So if I if I act out in a non-loving way, it's going to destroy me. It is not who I am at all. And every time I do, I fall, I fall apart in the past. I had no idea that's what was causing it though. And the discipline to live in the moment is the ability to drop all obligations to the past self and identity that you created or that you bought into. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Because in every moment, this is where you step into the quantum edge of creation here is because now, Yes, you start dropping everything you think you are and you start allowing yourself to discover who you are. I like that. We need to slow down so we can have that inner dialogue with a, within ourselves to know what we really truly want in each moment. Instead of just doing things because it's habitual, we should check in with ourselves to say, well, do I really want to do that right now? Or would I rather go do this or that, you know? 
That's exactly. what I was hearing you say. Yes. Yep. Or what would bring me the most peace, most joy, most love of life right now in this moment? We're here to love life, you know? And when you start doing this on a quantum level, the, the, the law of attraction, the synchronicity, everything supports you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're only making the decision in your brain and you're not actually in your heart and you're not in love with yourself, you're not being responsible, then what you're going to find is a catastrophe. So you, something will happen and it'll throw you completely off afterwards. And you'll be like, I never should have did that. I never should have took care of myself. And so we want you to, again, like you said, you have to slow down and you have to recognize that this is the process of learning to unlearn what you know and to keep moving forward. So don't think, don't discount that what you did and believe that you made a mistake by taking care of yourself. Just recognize that the rest of your reality hasn't caught up with that movement and it will eventually. And here's the thing too. Once you get on this path and let's say that you're doing great and you're like, man, life is amazing. How could I have ever thought it was bad? How could I ever think that they're suffering at all? And then the next day you're, you're back on where you were, you've fallen backwards. The, the closer you get to the center of who you are, the more dissonance you're going to feel when you're not in your truth. Yeah. So something that in the beginning of your journey would look like a small shift, the closer you get to your center of balance, you feel it. It's bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And something tiny may feel like the end of the world for you. Don't worry. You, you'll get through it. But the other side of that is the little things that bothered you a long time ago. They're like you know, flies <laughs> or it's some, you know, they don't even bother you at all. They don't even catch your attention. Mm -mm. All right. The next one is trust and to trust that you're the creator of your reality. Now that's a tough one. I like this. One. That is my favorite <laughs> because it's what makes everything possible. Cause when you have that trust for yourself and that you knowing that you're creating it, when you're seeing something that you don't want, then you can take responsibility for you. Now, when you take responsibility for you, it changes everything. So as the creator, I can't look outside myself and say, well, such and such did that. They have to fix that for me to be okay. Because what you've just said is, I'm not okay. Oh, well, guess what? If you just focus on that, I'm not okay. And that's where your attention needs to be. Why am I not okay? Such and such said, said to me, put your dish in the sink. And I got really upset and it hurt my feelings. That, well, such and such didn't do anything to you. Why are you not okay with what was said? Why do you need it to be different? And then you start to recognize how you're holding yourself out of your truth. Because you won't have those moments anymore once you're expressing yourself truly. And you won't look outside of yourself for the resolution. Because once you know you are the creator, and you start being in your truth, then the reality starts to change. Like she was saying, everything is good. Everything is love. And the moment it's not, oh, what did I do? What did I do to myself that took me out of my truth, that created something through the law of attraction and quantum focus and attention that is not what I was anticipating or wanting? Hmm. And if you, if, let's say, let's look at a situation that you're going through. You can look at it by trusting the situation or you can look at it with doubt and doubt is what takes us away from the truth of who we are. Because if we lived perfectly in unison with the truth of who we are, we would never doubt. And then we have the idea that, okay, I'm creating this. This is what I want, but I still think this is possible. Well, guess what? You're opening the door for something you don't want still. So as the creator of your reality, why would you look at anything you don't want? It doesn't make sense to even consider something you don't want in your reality. Because you're quantumly witnessing it. And you're going to bring it to you is how it works. The what ifs. Well, what if this is, oh, the what I ifs to go are deadly. This because what if this is this? Well, I just, you just open the door for yeah. the what if to happen. And, and you're likely to get some kind of interaction with it. Oh yeah. That's so, my husband. <laughs> so it's the trusting it's the trusting in yourself trusting in the higher purpose of you of what people call god 
um, and having no doubt whatsoever with every experience you go through. Just imagine what life would be like. You know, we always say, what if you could trust life? What if you could trust yourself? And that's another part about when you, when you do trust yourself, then a lot of the other parts, again, the components of our lives, there's no need to control when there's trust. Because I already know the law of attraction brings everything I need to me. I don't have to control anything. I just have to spend my day being me. And I'm supported in every way. And any moment I start doubting that being me is enough, I'm going to create something I don't want. Wow. I love that. And I love the whole idea about creating what it is you want, you know, and really focusing on your desires and what you want to do with your, with your energy. Mm -hmm. So what you want and why you want it, you know, mm -hmm. because yeah. if, if there's something that you desire, um, the, it can come from the heart or it can come from the brain. Oh, that's what I wanted to ask you. Okay. So you were mentioning on the last one about if you're in your head versus in your heart, how do you recommend the listeners go from their head to their heart? I think for my brain, it's always a control of focus that I do. I, I do know that when I think for my brain, I need this to happen. And I'm thinking from here and it's not going to create the reality. The brain does not control external. The brain is only for internal. If I think from my heart, then I create a frequency, a vibration, a connection that, that radiates from me and allows the law of attraction to bring everything to me. But the brain, brain doesn't do it that way. There comes a point in our lives where we have the choice. Everything that we believe, everything that we do is our choice. And if there's fear or doubt involved, it's coming from the brain. The heart has no fear, has no doubt. And if you're in a moment of fear and doubt, and if and if you're in a moment of, you know, creating things you don't want, you don't have to indulge in the fear. You can, you are, uh, you can make a declaration that says no more. This is not who I am. I have not seen myself clearly and I'm opening the space for the truth of me to come in right now because I am strong. I am safe. I, you know, this is what I declare. And then when you, another thing about being able to tell the difference, whether you're in your head or your heart when you're when you feel that angst and that disappointment and that oh, in your chest, you're definitely not in your heart. This is the emptiness that is giving you that feeling. The because, spirit leaving the heart. Yes. So you're it's up here in your head. And even though you're feeling it in your chest, it's only because you're thinking from your head. Because when you feel that fullness, how you're relaxed, that you're in your heart when there's joy the heart doesn't have a, a separate emotion other than love. So breathing exercises, you were saying, how do you get from your head to your heart? You can do breathing exercises and visualizations where, you know, you can visualize, visualize that you're in your head and you take an elevator down to your heart and then look <laughs> at it and be like, Oh, this is so nice. And then bring all of your energy into the heart and be like, I just want to hug myself. You can hug yourself like this. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> I like that when she said that infinity, I was thinking about last night. Cause I often sleep on my side like this. Mm -hmm. And, um, I was thinking about you last night, Laura, <laughs> <laughs> I also have heard like, just visualize like you're like almost like the elevator, like you said, just dragging it down. And I always visualize my heart space as this like really white, luxurious, space that has these chiffon pink things and then this like a big veranda that opens up to the ocean and can I, I kind of visualize that way when I'm meditating and that's like my little heart space my little hideaway mm -hmm. and also part of getting into the heart is getting out of fight or flight so you can do all the fight or flight exercises that we've been teaching all of the breathing exercises we've been teaching. That's what the whole stop is about. It's yeah, to stop, be, be kind to yourself, take responsibility, to have the discipline and the trust. And that's how you really get into your heart is by doing all of these things simultaneously. Uh -huh. So that is a good another good way to look is 
if you're in fight or flight, if you have any kind of stress, you're in your head. Because the goal of the brain is to save life and limb. And the goal of the heart is to love. And in order for you to continue to love with a physical body, you need to save life and limb. So if you have any fear or stress, you're going to be in your head, not in your heart, because the heart knows that it needs the body in order to stay in this space. Well said. You guys are amazing. I just love all this stuff. Okay. Do we have two more, Christine? We do. Safety we still have control. safety. Yeah. <laughs> and then they just pile right in there. So safety is your ability to find that you are okay in each moment that you don't have to look outside yourself to be okay. You find that safety internally, because if you're looking externally, it's another one of those moments where like you can feel somebody else is in control of your reality. And you don't want that. When somebody else controls your reality, you are a victim. Anytime you feel like you're a victim and you're unsafe, you are not in awareness that you are okay in every moment. Again, so trust is trusting that you are the creator of your reality and safety is your ability to be okay in the moment. So that's the difference between the two. And you can take it like this too. When you have the, you can feel safe in this moment, but not be able to trust yourself and then you'll lose your safety. So they do tie together. So if you know that you're always safe and you can trust yourself to be the full expression of who you are, then everything is fine. When you stop being the full expression of yourself, you start to feel unsafe. It's a natural side effect. So if you don't feel safe, you just know you're not expressing something and you, you can't trust yourself to express yourself. And that's why you feel unsafe. Awesome. I love it. And we have one more. <laughs> Let's control. <finish> <laughs> control, control. The only thing that you fully control is the creation of yourself. Hmm. Yeah. it's kind of like you know how people tell you um when you die what do you take with you it's this it's a similar way of thinking that's an easy one we can we can visualize when we die we don't take anything with us because we're not moving anymore and our, our spirit leaves and we're gone so control is a similar concept of that you can't control anything external but by controlling the creation of yourself and knowing that the, what you create is the control, then you understand how the law of attraction supports you, how the universe has your back. But if you try to control something outside of yourself, it, it doesn't manifest. It's not how quantum physics or any of that works. Another way that I think I would say this is the witness. I can witness myself. Mm -hmm. I so, like that. yeah, so the, the, the creation of who we are, a lot of times we leave it up to, again, we'll, you know, all, all of these overlap with each other. We take it back to the, the identity that we're creating, you know, because we've bought into what society says we need to be. But, so it leads into the concept. So you take on a belief that wasn't yours and then you do start to create something and the thing is you're creating from something that is not you and then the reality starts to unfold and move in a direction that is not you so again realizing the only thing that you fully control is the creation of yourself brings you back to the reality that oh you brought something into you that you don't actually want you don't need to change the external you just change okay what did i do how do I do that? How do I, and here's the, gosh, we haven't even spoken about this one. In this moment, at any point in time, I can stop and completely divorce any experience I've ever had and never repeat it again. See, because I am the creator, because I am the control, because I am responsible and disciplined in my creation, I can immediately stop something. And if I hold that truth, and if I hold that space, that I'm done with this, the universe has my back, quantum reality has, has the attention and focus, and it just stops. So for instance, if you're moving forward in your life and there's just this tragic train wreck coming at you and you see it coming, well, don't try to stop the train wreck. Done. 
whatever I did that got me there, I'm done with. Just get out of that game. You say your prayers at night, game. you wake up, <laughs> you wake up different than when you went to bed. See, and, and I'm a strong, I'm a strong believer in prayer. And it did, and I don't mean you, you know, I'm not speaking from a state of religion. I'm speaking from a state of heart and, and the God self and the God spark of who we are. Prayer initiates that energy and brings that forward. We don't have to go through habit to undo something we don't want. You just take over the control of the creation of our reality. Cool. I do believe I like we, have, we have spoken. I mean, throughout this whole thing, that's what we were speaking of. Yeah, we had to bring like it with to, the declaration. To the boom, that. boom, boom. We had to really <laughs> hammer it home. <laughs> I always say that. I mean, I, I got this quote from somebody, I can't remember who, but it says you alone are, are responsible for everything you do, everything you don't do and every way you respond to what is done to you, which basically means I have control over this and not that, you know, exactly. but you have, you have ability to be responsible for how you see that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. How you experience that, how you perceive that how you interact with that. And if you're kind and if you're loving yourself, then all of that looks great. And I mean, it just, it, again, everything just feeds on all. That's why we have all seven of these. And I like that it's a lucky number seven group too. For a lot of us, lucky number seven is, is masterful. Another way to think about this is, you know, when we're traveling down the street and we think we're walking down the street instead of the street coming to us. If you're, if you're playing a video game, are you actually in the video game or do you just believe? I mean, it can elicit the same emotions, same responses when you're playing a video game. But what's a really cool analogy with this is when you're outside of it, you can disconnect from it and say, well, I'm done with that. You know, we can do the same thing here. If we look at it that way, we're like, oh, well, I'm done with that book. I'm done with that chapter in my life. I'm done with that game that I'm playing. Oh, and the reason... The reason people think that that effort doesn't work is because they fall back into the habitual, which draws it back to them again. See, if you truly are done and you let go of the habits that brought that to you, it doesn't reoccur. It's, it is that simple, but we get, and we get lazy. We get distracted. We get a narrowed focus. We want somebody else to feel better when we don't think of ourselves and we bring all of that back that we said we were done with. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So what do you guys see? Like, what do you want to tell the listeners that key is going to be doing moving forward? Ah, moving forward, beginning of the year, we are starting everyone off with a workbook. And here is the why on that. It's so important to be aware of whether you're actually doing these things or not. And with a workbook, with the accountability of the workbook and us interacting with the information as a group each week, it's going to move you faster than you can move on your own. Yes. And because we're all telepathically and energetically and quantumly entangled. Mm -hmm. So it's really cool. We've had these groups in the past where some people attended the meetings and some didn't, but even the ones that didn't still had results. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it, that. Is, it is masterful mm -hmm. just by joining the group. Just by accepting it, the, basically you can consider it a contract because now you're in the creation with us and we're creating as a group. So everybody gets the frequencies, the vibration and the quantum responses because they are touched by the group. That's beautiful. All right, you guys, what would you like to say in closing? Thank you. <laughs> Have fun. <laughs> Play a little. Enjoy yourself. Right. Don't take this too serious. Don't make it hard. If it's hard, you're not being kind to yourself. Come and join us on the calls. Relax with us. You know, feel the vibrations, the frequencies, and, and uh, breathe. Yeah. Awesome. Breathe. The key calls are Tuesdays at three o'clock central. Correct. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you guys you can find the access on the inside of the QHS website. Super easy to join right from there, right from the homepage. And we look forward to seeing you on the next key call. Awesome. Thank you so much. Awesome. <laughs>